How is it possible that you can cut tax revenue, maintain government services, face a deteriorating world economy and get back to surplus? It sounds like magical thinking. Nicola, you're first. Well, in order to fund tax reduction, we have to reprioritise areas of government spending that aren't having high impact, and we have to include some additional revenue measures. So we're proposing reducing the amount that's spent on running government departments, reducing the amount spent on consultants and contractors, providing a climate dividend for the funding that we we'll receive from the emissions soon. trading yep. scheme, and, uh, and introducing new revenue measures, including yeah, tax on foreign buyers. Well. No, we're not. And we're we've been very careful to put together a fiscal plan that ensures not only do we maintain funding for frontline services, but we increase it every year okay. in our budget. That's a very important principle so for us. Is that, or is that going to be magical thinking? Is it all going to come together? No, because, because we've presented a fiscal plan yeah, that demonstrates Westpac that we can week. both increase the funding for frontline services, reduce wasteful spending, reduce debt... And get and back to all surplus. Of that, that's right. All right. And let's, let's, all of that relies on this. OK. You so have I'm... to be more efficient okay. and you have to drive more value. Now... Uh, no, 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 it's now time for Grant to jump in on that because he gets to answer the question of whether we're in an era of magical thinking where you can do all these things and get back to surplus. Well, there's absolutely no doubt that the National Party's fiscal plan is magic money. Every element of it has been challenged and is now under question. So the foreign buyer tax is okay. simply not going to bring We're going to go there first. Yeah, but, but, but you, you asked the question, you can't do what you proposed in your question, and National's policy simply doesn't add and up. And I'm asking it's you to justify well, how We're you... not doing it. We're not cutting taxes, Simon. We're no, but saying you are that... spending more. We're, we're not cutting taxes, Simon. We're saying that the revenue that we, is coming in now we need to deliver the quality of public services that New Zealanders need. You know, in What's Nicola's... In Nic in Hang on, we'll talk to GST soon. In, in, Nicola's fiscal, GST soon. in Nicola's fiscal plan, you have a situation where you could cut every policy person, every comms person, every piece of advertising that the Ministry of Justice is doing, that the Department okay. of Conservation is doing, and you still would be 30 or $40 million short can, in can each I just, agency. All right, can that I, is service cuts. All right. Can I just put this to you? Like, Westpac analysed both your policies this week. It was gloomy. They said that if you maintain the current level of services, which you're both saying you will do, is going to be an expenditure rise of $7.7 .7 billion, and there's no way you're going to get back to surplus. That's, well, to both, that's and, on and both can, of you. And can we just talk about fiscal plans for a minute? Because Grant <laughs> Robertson has published... <laughs> right, it, isn't, well, it isn't what Simon asked. Well, right, <laughs> well the, your question is about what the outlook looks like under Labor. To believe Westpac's forecast, you have to believe that Grant, for the first time in his entire tenure as a finance mm. minister, will stick to the spending limits he sets himself. Okay. Now, every allowance he set himself in a fiscal plan in the past, he has always broken. Every budget allowance he set, he has and, always and, broken. And, yeah, so well, actually, yeah, he's going to keep true. that habit up, and he will keep spending the, well, more. No, that will put more that, pressure no. on inflation. That is, that is that will true, put Grant, more pressure isn't it? On that is rates. true. What's true is that we've dealt with the cards that have been put in front of us, things like cyclones and global pandemics. And when Nicola looks at the expenditure patterns and the level of debt that comes out at the other end mm -hmm. and the level of unemployment that comes out at the other end, we've actually come in under on those two key metrics, but we deal with what's in front of us. Just okay. as Stephen Joyce and Bill English, when they overspent the allowances yeah. they set as well. You have to live in the real world. But the actual Let's... issue here is, Simon, if but, you are going, uh, okay. if you're going to propose so a fiscal Grant, plan, can I ask that you Nicola, can if I you're going to propose a fiscal plan on, that Nicola. Nicola has proposed, uh, uh, there is not room for the investment in public services. Uh, the balance okay. across what you're asking uh, isn't there. OK, look, we've, we've covered that off. Look, let's talk about something that in the real world, as you say, and that's inflation, that's mortgages, that's interest rates. And the Reserve Bank says this week they're going to stay higher for longer. Mm. Westpac says there's no cut predicted into the OCR until 2025. So how are both your policies, which are putting money into people's back pockets, mm -hmm. not going to be inflationary? Well, we are proposing to reduce the amount that the government spends from our first budget and over the forecast period. Less government spending means less pressure on inflation and interest rates. In addition, we are swapping out wasteful government spending for tax okay, reduction, and, and, and which many economists, mm -hmm. including those at the Treasury, have said dollar for dollar, tax reduction is less inflationary and this, than and this week, spending. And this week, Goldman Sachs came out with a report that said both your policies are going to be stimulatory, yours more so than Labor's. Well, can I just give you a couple of facts about the Goldman Sachs report? In order to reach that conclusion, it says that we won't be able to make spending reductions. When they... When they then forecast in that report, I've read it in full, mm. what would happen if we do achieve the spending reductions? They say, yes, it will actually be less inflationary. Okay, and we will achieve right. the spending but reductions. Well, Simon, That's it's it's actually relatively simple. If you put $20 billion 
of offshore buyer money into the property market, which is the underpinning of National's entire plan, mm. that will be inflationary. It will lift house prices. Almost every economist has said that. That will fuel inflation far more than the modest increases in government spending that we're proposing over the next few years. OK. All right. Let's move on to tax. Let's get it out of the way. We have to. Grant, here are some of your comments and your leader's comments on taking GST off fruit and veg. It's certainly not in the short term. Um, it, it would be a, a quite a complex change. So even if we, even if government was going to go down that road, um, it's likely to take some time to implement because um, you know all of the systems and so on would need to change. And it's not something that's on our short term work program at the moment. What what does short term mean? How do you define that? Well, I don't expect you to see anything in that space between now and the election. I, I never say never on these things, but that's certainly not something that we're working on at the moment. EST is a very, very simple system that works well for New Zealand. And once you start getting into removing it from particular products, it becomes complicated. You have to make trade-offs between different things. Is it healthy? Is it unhealthy? And will actually the benefit of that really be passed on to people? All right, so uh, complicated, a boondoggle, you didn't like it, so it's a last-minute U-turn to please the voters. No, it's a policy that the Labour Party has been working through. And it's something, <laughs> and it is, because it's, I mean, you were interviewing us there, we're ministers, we're reflecting the position of the government. The Labour Party <laughs> has... Say, should. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the Labour Party has worked through this, and we want to make sure that we reduce the cost of food. And, Simon, it's the so most... You're, you're on, let, me fin let me finish my sentence. OK. It's the, the cost of food is raised with us more often than almost anything else. House. This is a small contribution that we can make. It the is two small. big differences from then to now are the, the Grocery Commissioner and the team that he will have with him to make sure the benefits are passed on and moving it from just being fresh fruit and vegetables to including frozen fruit and vegetables. Okay, all right. It's so, a modest thing, yeah, but it's it will modest. help the people who walk through <laughs> Nicola, the fruit and veggie aisle and do not go. buy so anything just, because they can't afford so, it. Go, Nicola. So you just referred to the Grocery Commissioner's team. Mm. How many people with clipboards will he have running around the dairies and, you know, and supermarkets And you know, Nicola, that's not needed because he has oh, the powers... You just referred he to has the team. powers of investigation. Oh, so how many people will be in his he team? He has the powers how of... How many people will be in his team? That will be set by the Commerce Commission, but... Oh, just so let me answer this, because you asked the question, Nicola. All, no, you? I think it's supremely ironic that you're debating about whether or not the Grocery Commissioner can have use the powers he's already got to be able to get information from supermarkets. I just asked how haven't put any additional well, funding no, in from... Uh, the irony here, Nicola, is that around. you are billions of dollars short <laughs> right, we're, on what you do in your programme. And you're going complaining to that the about whether the Grocery we're Commissioner to... has enough staff. All right, let's do you... uh, hang on, we're going to put a full stop in that for the moment. Um, uh, just one more question on this for you, Grant. Uh, have you ever thanked Nicola for releasing your policy for you? I'm sorry? Have you ever thanked Nicola for releasing your GST? No, I haven't you? thanked Nicola for that. But, I mean, the Labor Party um, stands behind a 10-point cost of living plan. It includes lifts for working for families. It includes the cuts uh, to prescription okay. costs, which Nicola would All put right. back on people. It okay. includes the early childhood education costs, okay, which we're Nicola going to would put on. back on we're families. We're talking about other tax issues. Nicola, your turn. Has your party been up front when promoting its tax package with that top figure of $250 a fortnight? Absolutely. Because families who have three hundred dollars a fortnight, and I don't want the in, details. In have you been up Three hundred dollars a week. Yes, we have. Okay, Nicola, Simon, I've got. They I've got haven't. A, Would you like to no, no, list you all them. of uh, the accounts on which about, Christopher <laughs> Larson and, and Nicola Willis how, have just, not been like up for? How about I talk about my tax policy? No, no, no. I would like to talk about yours. Other than when you interrupted me doing mine, it's interesting the way you take that approach, isn't it? Mr. Robertson, you can interrupt me, but I can't interrupt you. I'm going to interrupt both of you. I'm going to interrupt the both of you right now because Nicola, I have a small montage for you to watch now. An average household income family with young kids gets $250 a fortnight. For an average household income family with young kids, that would mean $250 a fortnight, and that would make a huge difference to them. It does give an average income household family with young kids $250 extra a fortnight. OK, so what's missing in those phrases is up to. And one of those clips is on Instagram right now. National Party Instagram has chosen, highlighted, posted by the National Party, still not corrected. Oh, well, so I'll, you're still I'm doing it? Very, very happy to look into that. But can I break this down for you? Because I but, think it's really... Is that misleading? 
I think it's really important and that New Zealanders watching this debate understand how our tax plan works because we think New Zealanders are being overtaxed yep. and Labor's happy to continue with that. So, so there's two components that a family could qualify to get that 250. One is a rebate on yeah, their childcare costs. It, this is up not to about $150 that. It's not about that. It's about the fact that off their child you are costs. promoting the top the line part, and only 3,000 families but I, it's are really going to get that. that I break this out down, of 1.6 million of households with dependent children, 3,000 get the top amount. And we're talking about whether you have been misleading and just promoting that. I think it's really important that people understand how that entitlement will be broken down because the second part of it mm. is income tax reduction. We have targeted our income tax yeah, reduction at a median <laughs> income earner. So someone on $60,000 a year I, I, could be up to $50 and 130,000 families could be 150. Because an average okay. income household... So we know we're not going to go through every single tax ban this why, morning. Which is we're, why we use the simplification because yeah. see, as oh, I'm talking... So right. this, it's a simplification, yes. simplification. now, is it, if I, Nicola? If I a finish, misleading simplification. Can I, just, can I finish? Because, oh, gentlemen, this is important. When you're explaining a tax plan that has four different components, that varies depending on people's circumstances, the age of their children, their income, you do need to simplify. Simon, the okay. Okay. Simon, that Simon we I'm going to answer say. the question because Nicola hasn't answered the question. It is misleading. This is not a Briscoe sale, Nicola. It's meant to be a tax policy. What, what you can't that? say up to $250. And Are claim you that implying that I'm somehow a Briscoe saleswoman? Because I'm, I think I'm that's impli unfortunate. I'm Mr. implying Robinson. that the National Party's tax... Not implying, I'm saying. The National Tax Party policy is misleading. It's like a Briscoe's ad. You say up to mm. 250 bucks. It's only 3,000 families. But, Simon, it's much worse than that because the whole policy doesn't add up. The foreign uh, buyer okay, tax well, doesn't add coming. up. Uh, it's going to push more kids into poverty. Uh, it means well, no climate action. We're going to talk about the that whole before. tax policy. Look, and you know it. I can see but, in your no, eyes... You know uh, this right. policy so doesn't can I, can add I just, up. Yeah, yes. This is having been called the Briscoes lady. Yeah, 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 so did you, talk did about, I do that? I said the policy about, was a Briscoe well, okay, sale. Don't you that, that on with me. I'm going to re respond you, to that in Sure, you can respond. Which is, if we're going to talk about Briscoe's ads, let's talk about your Facebook ads, which have the GST off fruit and vegetables policy advertised as providing a 15% reduction in the price of fruits and vegetables. Will that happen? It will happen. It will happen. Not a single economist has agreed that It will happen if we drive that policy hard. But no, Nicola, it won't. you're Just talking about 3,000 okay. families out of 1.6 million okay. families. You have okay. misled New Zealanders. No, we, 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 we've talked about GST. We've just got to, I've just got to move on. One, a couple of little bit more on tax. I'm sorry. Um, at, when you're at high school, Nicola, <laughs> okay, during the maths exam, taking me back, do, taking yeah, taking you back. But when, what did they say to you when you did a maths exam? What do you mean? What, what did, did they, they say? say you, you know, you gave the answer, but what did they say to you? They said, show your workings, yes. didn't they? Yes, so occasionally they did. Occasionally they did. And you haven't. Yes, This we is have, your last Simon. chance. No, you no, haven't. I absolutely no, 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 no. You, have, you, you haven't shown the well, particular I'm workings, your, your spreadsheet of your workings. Okay. This is your yes, last chance have. to do it. Yes, we have. What right. we have done. Okay, well, you say you, say you have. I, do you, you either want an answer or you don't. If you okay. want an answer, I'll give you one, which is this. We have, for every component of our tax plan, released the annual costs of it, and we've described no, no, I'm the I'm talking about the workings of the, the foreign tax buyers. Okay, for yeah. the foreign tax buyers, what we've done is explained in quite a lot of detail our methodology. Okay. We've had it externally reviewed by experts. Mm -hmm. They've tested our assumptions. They've said they think that they're reasonable, cautious, consistent. Economists from the left, centre and right no. have said it does not add up. You I would need to sell $5 billion yet, of property every year forever to foreign buyers. It's a bad idea anyway because it will push first home buyers out of the market and it doesn't add up. Not. The entire fiscal plan, Nicola, <laughs> is, is a sandcastle and it won't add up. And New Zealanders <laughs> have been misled. So okay. you're, you're having to clutch to hyperbole I'm because not, this campaign... I'm saying what you, every you, economist in New Zealand is telling you, Nicola. That is not what every economist yes, for. They are. That, is we, not, um, that is incorrect. We are, and actually, we're, we're, the difference here is okay, we want bit. to offer income tax reduction to working people. He wants to keep overtaxing them. What <laughs> I want to do is provide proper okay, public services topic. and a policy that adds up. New, new topic, new topic. Quite an important one, climate change. Uh, and both of you cannot keep your hands off the Climate Emergency Response Fund cookie jar. OK, Nicola, you want to take it to pay for your tax cuts. You took $236 million out of it that you put in there and didn't tell James. So I need a commitment here on such an important issue. Will both of you not take any more out of that? 
Well, I can give you this commitment. We took $236 million back from an additional $1.5 billion that we put in to top up uh, the Climate Emergency Response Fund. It's billions and billions of dollars, Simon. We're absolutely committed to that fund yep. and to the climate action that it funds. So you won't rate it for purposes are, other than climate? It is there for climate emissions reduction and adaptation policy. It is a vital part of us reducing <laughs> our emissions. I and it will that. cease to exist so, oh yeah, under so, the National okay, Hang on, but... Do we, do I have that commitment or not? Of course you do, do. because okay, we great. put Let's extra money in, Simon. The most effective tool for reducing emissions in our economy, and Grant will agree with this, is the emissions trading scheme. I'm not which sure you agree with anything, but... Which I love how she puts words in Which effectively adds a price to polluters to send yep. them a clear price signal that they can't rely on fossil fuels anymore. We want that scheme to work. Under this government, because they've in intervened constantly, yeah. it's been undermined. Now, in order for it to be yeah. sustainable, we want to take the revenue raised by that scheme and we want to redistribute it to working people through income tax reduction, a climate dividend. We think that makes the emissions trading scheme sustainable because it means that as it adds what costs the to the economy, end up at which it will, Nicola? it'll add costs to petrol, yes, electricity. Well, hang on, hang on, we hang on, we want working yeah. people to stay on board with us. We don't want to have to do what Chris Hipkins and Grant Robertson yeah. did this year, so, which is they intervened okay, so, so what to I'm try saying, and collapse so the, the question, ETS if we go, price, circle back and to the question. And they ended up in court. Yes, they circ let's circle back to the question. And actually so you are, found wrong. So you're not, you're not, you're not committing to not leaving that alone. No, you're, because we think the right thing to do... You're going to take it and use it for tax funds. We think the right thing to do is to take the <laughs> revenue created by that extra tax on the economy and return it to working people. All right, so let's move on a little bit more on climate. If New Zealand doesn't meet its climate reduction targets, we may be up for a bill between 3 and $30 billion. Now, mm. that's not costed into any plans at the moment. Tell me, how are you going to pay for that bill, Nicola? Well, uh, the Treasury advice is that that bill shouldn't be put into the forecast yet because we should still be working to emission reduction policies. Okay. And that is, Nicola is correct, that okay. is the Treasury's advice. But Simon, you have to keep working, you have to keep delivering climate action. That's what that fund is for. It's there to reduce transport emissions, it's there to support the reduction in emissions from our industry. Okay. All of that goes under National's plan. And that's the problem well, she, with the tax plan. She proposed to use it a different way. Okay? No, no, yeah. absolutely not. It's funding National's tax cuts. Climate action is right. dead under the National Party. Okay. 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 Hang on. How are you going to fund it? We are okay. going to electrify New Zealand. Okay. How are you going to fund it? Double the amount of renewable energy. <laughs> you next topic. Next topic. We're we're paying 40 cents a litre. So my next, to next topic is... We're going to allow my next topic is, everybody... Just cut to me, Drew. Okay, thanks. Well, I won't have Let's talk. The next topic. The next topic is the cost of coalition, right? So, coalition. It's going to be a coalition either way. Nicola, Winston Peters wants to pay for residential care. 2,000 beds, $2.2 billion over three years, $2 billion worth of rates relief for pensioners. What is your Winston budget? I'm not having a negotiation now with someone who may or may not be there after the election. My the job right say now... That he, the polls say he's going well, to be there. do you know what? The final poll is uh, happening on election day, and between now and then, I'm saying to everyone, party vote national. He's going to be very expensive, isn't he? You have to admit that. You saw what happened well, in the know. last coalition. It was like a $3 As billion say, dollar provincial growth fund. I don't know that he's going to be there, and so I'm focused on national's plans to strengthen the economy, restore law and order, lift education <sighs> standards, deliver better health services. Yeah, so, and then That's Winston, Winston comes in on. and demands something and you'd say... You'd well, just we got... don't even know if he's going to be there. You could have ruled okay. him out. You could have ruled Winston out, as we did. Why didn't you? Did you rule him out in 2017? Because no, I didn't notice that you we, did. We've, and I we've reckon he'd pick up the phone again. We've ruled him out in this campaign. I reckon he'd okay. pick up the phone again. And this is the interesting thing, Simon, isn't it? Yeah, didn't rule him out in 2017 This is the interesting thing. The Chris Luxon, a week ago, said he'd pick up the phone to Winston Peters. Then he had to helicopter in John Key to go, oh, no, 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 we didn't really mean that. Can we talk the cost of coalition for Labor now? OK. It's not going to be cheap for you, Grant. To party Māori, bottom line is big tax-free threshold. The Greens want a universal basic income of about $385 a week, paid for by a wealth tax. But you don't, you don't, you don't support a wealth tax. So how are you going to pay for all that stuff? I mean, it's very expensive. As again, I've been in those coalition negotiations. Mm. I know how they work. You sit down and you work through the details of what you've got in common. There are bottom lines for us that we've been really clear about that we're not going to cross, and one of those is a wealth tax. But we have the experience to do this. Chris Luxon will have rings run around him by David Seymour and Winston Peters. The, the you know, interesting, okay. isn't it? They don't use okay. coalition right. of chaos anymore because they know they're in the I middle of one and they're trying to get rid of Winston Peters. 
Exactly. I want to give Graham this response. credit. Quick you do response. have a huge amount in common with the Greens and Te Party Māori. Big spending, big taxing, okay. add to inflation, add to interest rates. Actually, having, having some public services. Through. You know, here's right. an interesting thing, isn't to, it, Simon? I need to wrap Nicola this up. Nicola talks about wasting money on the way through. I we need had to a wrap report this up. yesterday. We uh, saved 20,000 uh, lives through COVID, and that's what Nicola we're calls spending. Okay, we have one more question. Wasteful spending, Nicola, eh? Nicola, saving Nicola, lives. Nicola Grant, I have one question for you, one final, very serious question for you this debate. How much capital and operating funding will you guarantee to set up the Johnsonville Amateur Dramatic Society? <laughs> <laughs> I think we can do that out of our own pockets, Simon. Well, oh, so it's going to be a cheap run operation. Uh, uh, it certainly will be very efficient. If I'm elected the MP for Ohariu, I can guarantee you I'll be writing to Grant Robertson and let's get that society going. Oh, <laughs> yeah. okay. I think both of us should be in it, Nicola, because um, it's well, entertaining proven, for everybody. You've proven in your addition today. Thank you so much, uh, Grant Robertson and Nicola Willis, for this morning's debate. Uh,